We have improved three major payloads. The first one is the main payload, which is very much like a camera. The face source of the camera on the Chang'e 1 is 512, and the Chang'e 2 camera is 6144. So spatial resolution increases greatly. The second one is a galaxy spectrometer. We're using a more efficient crystal, which hugely increases the energy resolution and detection efficiency. So we can probably get more data, which will be more accurate within a short time. The third one is the manipulator. The manipulator on Chang'e 1 is able to take one sample per second while Chang'e 2s can take five, so the sampling accuracy is increased. If we compare China's lunar projects with the other countries, what's our priority to make our project worthwhile? There are many scientific phenomena on the moon for us to discover. Different scientists have different research perspectives. The data vary due to different payloads and probe times. In addition, the data acquired at different spatial resolutions have different functions. It's unsafe to conclude that data acquired at a low spatial resolution is of no significance. Actually, these data are quite helpful to understand the macro state of the moon. Different data are complementary. Only if we integrate the data together can we have a comprehensive and deep understanding of the history and evolution of the moon. Thank you. You're now watching a special broadcast on CCTV News, Journey to the Moon, our coverage of China's second lunar probe, Chang'e 2. Our program will continue in a short while. Don't go away. China's Chang'e 2 will be launched by a Long March rocket at the Sichang Satellite Launching Center. The flight is divided into three stages. The launch, the moon orientation, and moon orbiting phase. The rocket carries the satellite into orbit in the first stage. In the second stage, the orbit will be modified two or three times based on the situation. When the satellite is 100 kilometers towards the paraloon, or the point in lunar orbit nearest the moon, its speed will be reduced to allow the satellite to enter the orbit 100 kilometers from the moon's surface. The various probes will be operated and some experiments will be carried out. Eleven seconds after the rocket is launched, it will start to turn. Its boosters will come apart in two minutes. Two other parts of the rocket will be separated. Thirty seconds later, when the rocket penetrates the Earth's atmosphere, the carrier rocket's nose cone will be discarded. Next, Stage 2 of the rocket will shut off its engine as Stage 3 is launched. The latter will gradually increase speed as it glides into position in the lunar orbit. When it arrives at the designated position, the rocket will reignite and its engine will stop when it arrives at the designated position. 表示崇高的敬意，祝伟大祖国繁荣昌盛，祝各位节日愉快，身体健康，阖家幸福。此次发射活动圆满结束，谢谢。Next, 
the solar panel monitoring camera will start working. The satellite solar arrays will deploy. The satellite moves into its cruising position in orientation to the sun. It will be the first time the images of solar panel unfolding have been taken by the Chinese lunar probe. Next, the orientation antenna monitoring camera starts taking pictures. Antennas will deploy toward the Earth. This is again the first time that antenna unfolding images will be taken during a Chinese satellite launch. The satellite flight orbit is likely to be modified two or three times to reduce flight errors. This is to ensure the satellite meets the moon in orbit. When the satellite enters the moon orientation track, the errors between the satellite flight orbit and projected orbit will be trimmed. If the apogee of the satellite orbit is nearer than planned, the satellite will increase its speed and reach the targeted orbit. If the apogee is further than planned, the satellite will decrease its speed. Upon entering the lunar orientation track, the satellite will adjust its attitude by altering the main engine's ignition. During the orbit modification process, the engine camera will start working, capturing images of the engine's ignition and again, the first images of their kind. During the moon orientation phase, Chang'e 2 will turn on detectors to acquire the information of the space environment. Chang'e 2 will also perform ultraviolet ray navigational experiments. The satellite will reach the moon's vicinity after some 112 hours of flight the most important step will be taken at this time, which is to operate the satellite's braking. There is only one chance for the satellite to meet the moon in its orbit. If the braking does not succeed, the flight around the moon cannot be accomplished. For the satellite to brake in space, it must first go in reverse by adjusting its engine forward. Reverse force will be acted to reduce the velocity of the satellite. After the first braking, the satellite speed will be decreased to below the lunar escape speed. Then it will enter the elliptic orbit at the speed of 12 hours per cycle. Afterwards, Chang'e 2 will break twice more to adjust its track cycle into the shorter polar orbit. It will then orbit in just under two hours per cycle. Probing and detecting missions will be implemented in this oval orbit. After that, the Chang'e 2 will break twice more at the Paralloon point. Stage 3 will then begin to probe the moon's surface. During its lunar orbit, Chang'e 2 will take photographs of the Bay of Rainbows on the lunar surface. The newly designed high-tech aerial reconnaissance CCD camera system will be used to take pictures at a resolution of more than 1.5 meters. The Chang'e 2 will readjust its position in orbit to 15 kilometers from the Paralune and 100 kilometers from the Apalune. The Bay of Rainbows is the spot chosen for Chang'e 3 to land on its mission. 
One or two days later, Chonga Chu will return to its original orbit to continue the experiments and take three-dimensional panoramic images of the lunar surface. It will also sample the surface soil's substances and the surrounding environment. You're watching a special program, Journey to the Moon. One hour ago, China launched its second lunar orbiter, Chang'e 2, from the Xichang Satellite Launch Center in southwest China's Sichuan province. Well, the mission marks another step in China's moon exploration project. The orbiter and its carrier rocket left the ground at around 7 p.m. local time, as scheduled. It headed for the upper limits of the atmosphere several minutes after the launch, carrying with it the nation's mission of further exploring the moon. About half an hour after that, taking off from the launch pad, Chang'e 2 separated from the rocket and entered the Earth-Moon transfer orbit as planned. The satellite is expected to take about 124 and provide a high-resolution photograph of the landing area. Chang'e 2 was built obviously as a backup and alternative to Chang'e 1, which was launched in October 2007 and maintained a 16-month lunar orbit. Back then, the series of the Chang'e probes are named, we know, after a legendary Chinese moon goddess, Chang'e. Well, now let's go to our reporter Shen Jing, who has been covering from the observatory here in Beijing. Shen Jing, what can you tell us about the work in the observatory? Are they going to collect data anytime soon? Hello, Zhou Yuan. Now we can see the big screen show the live picture of the Xichang Satellite Launch Center. But the system here will start working tomorrow to receive the first data sent back from the space probe. But the engineers tell me that uh, the, uh, all the observatories here are working well in tracking the satellite. Uh, but the probe is 380,000 kilometers away. So how can the data be sent back to the center um, from so far away and how can the data be transmitted safely now here with me to talk about this is Wang Xiaodong the team member of the ground research and application system here okay well the data is coded and then transmitted from the spacecraft to the ground and because the moon is very far away so we have to use a very big dish antennae to receive the signals after the acquisition of the data and they are transmitted to our center here by uh, uh, optical fibers and uh, in order to keep the integrity and correctness of the data we first uh, use a robust way to code the data for radio transmission and then we use two ground stations to receive the signals individually and three we're, in every step in our workflow, we have a hard backup for our hardware and software system. So uh, this is why we're confident. And uh, could you tell us uh, what improvements have there been to the system here for Chang'e 2? Well, uh, we have improved uh, the, our ability to 